Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Poor M. Night Shyamalan. And I mean that. Here's a guy who peaked far too early, was built up as one of the great directors after only doing a few films, and obviously had way too many ideas that weren't thought out enough and kept getting green-lighted. However, as M. Night Shyamalan likes to say, was like it was meant to be. But everyone has the same question. When did the slippery slope of assness begin? Some say it was with the village. Others say it was with the happening. But for me, I think it all goes back to the invasion of the plot holes. Signs. Yeah, I know the movie was a big hit when it came out. Yeah, I know the critics liked it. Yeah, I know the magazines were calling Shyamalan the next Spielberg after it premiered. Yeah, seriously, the next Spielberg. You call that one, Newsweek. Yeah, I know a ton of people did and still really, really enjoy this film. But y you don't know any better. Y you don't. You think that... No, you don't know any better, okay? It's not well written. It's not well directed. It's not well acted. It's not... Well, okay, so let me enlighten you as to why this film is not well. This is Signs. We open with Mel Gibson when his name was proud to be placed above the title as opposed to being shamefully shoved into the and category as he wakes up to the sound of his daughter screaming. His brother, played by Joaquin Phoenix, also goes out to check the trouble. Oh, where's Morgan? Too. Morgan, what's happening? The dogs are barking. Woke us up. Ah, yes. See that bland, non-expressive dead face that only a cult king can give you? Get used to that, folks. There's a lot of it in the rest of this movie. So they see that there are crop circles in the middle of their fields. Wait, why did that warrant the little girl going, Ah! Does stomped corn really frighten her that much? And okay, directing 101, it usually helps if you tell us the name of the place before you give us five minutes of a scene. It's like an alien suddenly saying... Sick. Why don't you take him outside? I'll call Dr. Crawford. He doesn't treat animals. He'll know what to do. Yeah, come on. Dog anatomy is pretty close to human anatomy, right? Oh, that was quick, Caroline. I only called you folks two hours ago. Oh, Mrs. Kendallman twisted her ankle, as she puts it, diving for her life when a bunch of school kids rode down the sidewalk on skateboards. She went down to Thornton's store this morning and started spitting on the new skateboards. Spitting. By the time I got there, Mrs. Kendallman had sprayed the whole damn place. Forgive me, what I'm doing is called Tarantinoing, where you talk about something that has nothing to do with the rest of the story, but is kind of funny and a little quirky. It was very avant-garde in its day and used to develop some strong character traits, but it's just used as a cheap gimmick for pretentious screenwriters to draw a ton of attention to their writing style as opposed to serving the plot. By the way, I'm mostly pointless in this. I don't even draw my gun in this movie. Aliens attacking and I never draw my gun. That is ass shit. Meanwhile, his two kids find that their dog is acting a little funny. Houdini? 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 Bo, don't run. What's wrong, boy? Stop it, Houdini. Careful, dog. You might get that Culkin to slightly open his eyes a little. Don't even get me started on the possibilities of emoting! Some animals around the county have been acting funny. And some of them violent. Is it a virus? I don't think so, Father. Caroline? Please stop calling me Father. What's wrong? I don't hear my children. Uh, I think you missed a line. <laughs> ah, here we go. Uh, Mel Gibson turns as if something is wrong as he says the line, I think something is wrong, which gives the cop reason to ask, what's wrong? 
Seriously, directing 101. I... Fell on me. We wanted to kill Bo. So, wait a minute. A crop circle gets the girl going, ah! But when a dog tries to attack her, she sits calmly with her legs folded? And for that matter, Gibson caught the absence of his kids whispering in the distance, yet the stabbing of a violent animal somehow didn't catch his ear? He can pick up, but he can't pick up. Talk about selective hearing! Oh, well, maybe it's the fact that there's so much goddamn low-level whispering in this movie that the actual absence of it seems legitimately startling. It was like it was meant to be. That night, Gibson is woken up by another disturbance. Maybe he can't hear the crickets chirping. There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? Oh my god, it's Black Suit Spider-Man. Stop him before he does a tap dance routine. We both go outside, move around the house in opposite directions. We act crazy, insane with anger, make them crap in their pants, force them around till we meet up on the other side. Explain that crazy. Oh, I don't know, something like this. You should just fucking smile and blow me! <sighs> they see garbage spilled over, but then somehow Black Suit Spider-Man got to the roof again. Yeah, so, uh... <clears throat> Alien report! Stepped on roof and swung on swing. Very confusing mission accomplished. We'll now go to Arkansas to put toast in toaster and slide down slide. They call the cop in the morning and we partake in yet another favorite of Shyamalan's, the pointless pan across. So how are you, Meryl? Fine. How's work at the gas station? Stimulating. I never got a chance to tell you, but I... Now, here's the thing with these kind of shots. These can work if they're trying to get across an uncomfortable mood or unworldly environment. But through most of the movie, we're in everyday farmland, which obviously isn't that scary, and these shots are done during non-suspenseful moments. So once again, it just serves to shove the style in our faces as opposed to actually get us engrossed in the situation. But don't worry, there's still plenty of needlessly slow dialogue to suck you back in. How certain are you that this was a male? Oh, I don't, I don't know any girls who could run like that. I don't know, Meryl. I've seen some of those women on the Olympics. They can run like the wind. This guy got on our roof in like a second. Our, our roof is 10 feet high. They have women's high jumping in the Olympics. They got these Scandinavian women who can jump clean over me. Okay, we're sexist dicks who don't watch the Olympics. Will you arrest something? Oh, hey, aliens. Didn't think we'd see those in this movie. Pop science first emerged in the late 70s with renewed interest in extraterrestrial life. They died out by the early 80s, dismissed as hoaxes. This new resurgence is wholly different. The speed and the quantity in which it has appeared implies the coordination of hundreds of individuals over many countries. Either this is one of the most elaborate hoaxes ever created, or basically, it's for real. That's right. People years ago did crop circles as an elaborate hoax to convince people that aliens were real. But in a friggin' unbelievable coincidence, the real aliens had the exact same way of communicating as those hoaxes. What are the fucking odds? It was like it was meant to be. The next day, they all go into town to run some errands, and we figure out through poor exposition that Gibson used to be a reverend. Right after another pointless pan shot. It was asthma medicine, right, Father? Morgan Hiss. And it's not Father anymore. We also get some amazingly hokey acting from this general guy. After, you guessed it! I've had two separate folks tell me there have been strangers around these parts last couple nights. Can't tell what they look like, because they're staying in the shadows. Covert-like. Nobody's been hurt, mind you. And that's the giveaway. It's a military procedure. You send out a reconnaissance group, very small, check things out. Not to engage, but to evaluate the situation. Evaluate the level of danger. No, oh, I apologize. I don't really talk this way. I'm just auditioning for a Twilight Zone episode. <clears throat> and that's the getaway. 
Make sure things are all clear. Clear for what? For the rest of them. What are you, sucking on your mom's teat? Close your lips, you weirdo! Disney's Hall of Presidents is more natural than you! Shit, I know you. You're Meryl Hess. Duh. I was there the day you hit that 507-footer over the left field wall. Duh. Set the record. Duh. Man, that thing had a motor on it. Duh. Still the record, right? Duh. Got the bat at home. Why weren't you in the pros making stacks of cash and getting your toes licked by beautiful women? Toes licked? Can we get the camera off this guy? He's weaving me out! I think he's the alien in this movie! He has the minor league strikeout record. Hello, Lionel. Merrill's a class A screw up. He would just swing that bat as hard as he could every time. Didn't matter what the coaches said. Didn't matter who was on base. He would just whip that bat through the air as hard as he could. Thanks, person who clearly has a connection to Joaquin Phoenix, though we don't know what it is and we will never see again. I will not miss you. It was like it was meant to be. They meet for lunch in a restaurant when we come across another staple of M. Night Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan. He plays the man who accidentally ran over Gibson's wife. Hence the reason Gibson lost his faith. But that's brushed aside for another scene where he hears some noise in his crops again. You know, for a guy who apparently owns all these fields, you never see him do any farm work. I'm not gonna report this or anything you do to my crops, to the news or TV or anybody. <laughs> oh my god, he's being invaded by Kermit the Frog. I understand you haven't subscribed to the Muppet YouTube channel yet. Don't make me shove the rainbow connection up your ass. <laughs> it's not easy being dead. Why, Dad, you look so dramatic. I never see you like this. Let's turn on the TV. They decide to finally turn on the TV and see that the aliens are indeed landing. Or just hovering around in the skies for a bit. Why nobody approaches them or takes them down is anybody's guess. My ballet recital. Listen, Bo, this is very important. Everything people have written about in science books is going to change. The history of the world's future is on the TV right now. We need to record this so you can show your children this tape and say you were there. For your children, Bo. What kid talks like this? It's like a fucking eight-year-old version of Morpheus! You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Whoa. This image has not been adjusted or enhanced in any way. What you're seeing is real. It's unbelievable. Everything they wrote in science books is about to change. Okay, so we're in a world where the children talk like adults and the adults talk like children. Let's hear some more of that jolting, unrealistic talk, shall we? So there are two reasons why extraterrestrials will visit us. To make contact in the spirit of exploration and furthering the knowledge of the universe. Or the other reason, they're hostile. Well, if mankind is as emotionally dead as you are, I don't think they'll learn much from us. Oh, well, these credible kindergarten drawings will certainly convey the seriousness of the book's intent. Oh, and there's also a drawing of their house on fire in the book with three dead people that look like them outside. My god, this obviously means... Wait, no, what does this mean? The author knows they're going to die? He met them before and did an illustration of them? Quick, a distraction before you think about it too much! <laughs> ah, that'll do the trick! Let's see what my tea is up to here. I've never fallen asleep driving before. It had to be at that right moment. That 10, 15 seconds when I passed her walking. It was like it was meant to be. I know that's not the best thing for a murderer to tell a murder victim's husband, but what can I say? I'm a bad writer. These places marked in crops and such, none of them are really near water. I don't think they like water. Did you see something, right? I'm truly sorry for what I've done to you and yours. Don't open my pants.
pantry, Father. I found one of them in there and locked him in. Uh, okay, let's try this conversation again. You start with, HOLY SHIT, I GOT AN ALIEN IN MY HOUSE! CALL THE COPS! CALL THE FBI! CALL THE NEWS! THE WORLD DESERVES TO KNOW! Then you move on to, oh, by the way, I'm sorry I hit your wife like I was playing a game of Crazy Taxi. This would be closer to a typical human reaction. Something Shyamalan, like the aliens, knows very little about. Hello? Gibson goes in to try and sneak a peek, but these giant aliens somehow slip their teeny tiny hands through the bottom of a door and try to attack him. Go with God, motherfucker. And a good manicurist. Rather than call the police because, fuck, that's what anyone not in a Shyamalan film would do, he goes home and sees everybody continues to watch TV. This video was taken yesterday afternoon at his son's seventh birthday in the city of Passo Fundo, Brazil. All initial opinions are this is genuine. What you're about to see may disturb you. Oh boy, there's a lot of buildup for this. I can't wait to see the incredibly scary and, of course, original design of this thing. Oh! 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 Oh my god, it looks like every other alien I've ever seen in every other movie! Oh! 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 I'm changing the channel! Oh! 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 Ground forces have been assembled in countries throughout the globe. <clears throat> Hundreds of thousands have flocked to temples, synagogues, and churches. God be with us all. Well, good job to the newscasters for not spreading panic or alarm. When have you ever heard a newscaster talk like this? What kind of overly emotional, fear-driven news corporation acts like that? You knew that was coming. So the family decides to hold down the fort, you know, stay in the area where they absolutely know the aliens are, and try to defend themselves. We're going to board up every window in this house. How do we know boards will do anything? because they seem to have trouble with pantry doors. Really, Shyamalan, did you read that line out loud? Did, did you ever read that line out loud? You couldn't have. You, you clearly couldn't have. I mean, you just stated that these technologically advanced aliens, these creatures that we are supposed to be afraid of, cannot get through pantry doors. They can build spacecraft that can jump millions of miles across space, but... They seem to have trouble with pantry doors. They can take these exact same spacecrafts and turn them invisible so that nobody else can find them years above our technology, but... They seem to have trouble with pantry doors. They're gonna take over our planet, but... They seem to have trouble with pantry doors. They're going to wipe out all of mankind, but... They seem to have trouble with pantry doors. You can't be this stupid! You can't! I mean, you literally just stated out loud why this movie can't work! I mean, what are you, a moron? I, I hate to borrow from a subpar comedy, but... Take it, Scary Movie 3! They mastered space flight, but they can't get through a wooden door? You see what you did there, Mommy? You see what you did? You just made Charlie Sheen write about something! You did that, Mommy! You did it! That's how bad you've gotten this... Advanced and logically holy shit fuck race of aliens! Stop! Come to a halt by a fucking pen tree? So they board up the windows with wood because, hey, pantry doors are made out of wood. It seems to be their Achilles heel. And as you'd expect, the aliens cannot fucking get past it. Seriously, I'd give anything to see what these aliens are saying when they actually do start their attack. <laughs> Oh, my God.
Do you know what happened when you were born, Morgan? You came out, and your mama kept bleeding. So the doctors rushed you out of the room before I even had time to see you. They're on the roof. While they were fixing her up, all she kept asking about was you. They're in the house. I wanted your mama to see you first. Because she had dreamed about you her whole life. And she got feeling better. They brought you in. And they placed you in her arms. And she looked at you. And you looked at her. And you just stared at each other for the longest time. And then she said real soft. Hello, Morgan. I'm your mama. You look just how I dreamed. Oh, boy. So they hide in the basement, but thank God, another door is there to protect them. But one of them gets the bright idea to try and grab the kid from the window, which causes him to have an asthma attack. But luckily, the father is there and manages to calm him down. After spending the night down there, yeah, they never figured out how to get through the door, they hear on the radio that apparently the aliens were defeated. And here's a big shock, they were defeated very quickly. No, their tactical maneuvers were so flawless. As long as you just don't put any doors in their way, they're practically invincible. I'll bring the TV in here. But what do you know? One bullet left. However, in a totally forced flashback, we see Gibson talk to his wife for the last time, who was pinned against a tree. Just taking a walk for dinner. You love hawks. Thanks for reminding her of that. Tell Foreman to play games. <laughs> you love playing. It's okay to be silly. I will. <laughs> you love silly. And tell Grim. Tell him to see. <laughs> you love seeing. And tell Meryl to swing away. Tell Tony Tim I won't be coming home this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the time it didn't make sense, but now Gibson knows that the term swing away was, I swear to God I'm not kidding here, God's way of telling Gibson in the future that Joaquin Phoenix is supposed to swing his bat to defeat the alien. Meryl, swing away. Of course! Who would have possibly put together that the best way to defeat this thing was to beat the shit out of it? Nobody could have come to that conclusion. Well, obviously God had to kill a reverend's wife in order for somebody to figure that out. It just makes perfect sense. Oh, and you want to know what the big twist was in this one? Apparently the only thing that can kill the aliens is water. Yeah, it's like acid to them. One drop hurts them like crazy. Hmm, probably should have thought that through before attacking a planet MOSTLY COVERED IN WATER! My god, we were afraid of these things? They have three major easily accessible weaknesses! Water, wood, and blunt instruments! Hell, if God really wanted to get his message across, he would have had his dying wife say, Hey, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but if aliens attack, go get a lake house. He thinks she was crazy, like he already did before. But hey, when aliens attack, that boat home is suddenly looking pretty affordable, isn't it? Unfortunately, the alien sprayed the kid with poison gas, but luckily his lungs were closed due to the asthma, so he's okay. Can someone save me? That's right! The message of the story is that everything has, and always will, fall perfectly into place. The day is saved, everything happens for a reason, which means that his faith is restored and he goes back to being a reverend. 
Gotta hand it to you, God, you do work in mysterious ways. For in the grand plan, he took Gibson's faith away just so he could give it right back to him. So in reality, nothing has changed at all. Oh, except that there's a dead wife in the mix. But still, thank you, God. Thank you for killing my beloved just so everything could go back to exactly the way it was before. Again, minus the loving, supporting wife that you so cruelly took away from me. But hey, I'm sure that was all part of your plan to keep things exactly the way they were, minus the loving, supportive wife that you took away from me. But I know in your plan you wanted everything to go this way, which is exactly how it was before. Again, minus the loving, supportive wife that you took away from me. But I know that you... God's fucked up! He plans ahead about as much as these dumbass aliens do! Or, let's be honest here, M. Night Shyamalan does! I'm sorry, but this movie's horrible! I never got why so many people liked it. It's overly dramatic, annoyingly slow, has a real ego when it comes to its own style, and of course, any sense of logic is totally ignored! There's millions of other twists you could have done to this movie. Like, how about the aliens were trying to help people, like bring them a cure or something? Or maybe there were no aliens, it was all an elaborate hoax! That would have been unexpected! Or, hell, maybe none of this was going on and Gibson and Phoenix were just goddamn nuts! Hell, maybe the TV was never even on! I don't know, just anything is better than... I don't think they like water. And it turns out they don't like water! Hell, you just said your twist in the first half of the movie! I don't even know if that makes it a twist! You know what's really scary about this movie? That so many goddamn people enjoyed it and Shyamalan is still getting work because of it! I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember! <laughs> Excuse me, I got some aliens at my door. We'll eat this long, eat this long. Do go! It's like it was meant to be.